Hi everybody, happy new year. So today I wanna to talk to you guys about some of the stuff that I have just come through this year, which is so like hard. A lot of us have had a very, very hard year. So I'm gonna share a little bit about what has happened during my 2019 and like how it's actually turned from being stuff that like I thought was gonna be like the worst stuff ever that I was gonna have a really hard time coming out of, but those things actually have turned into what I'm most grateful for. Like today as I'm doing like this, wow, this year I thought like I was gonna die one time. Like I'm gonna tell you guys all this stuff, but like so many of the things that we go through, we think we're never gonna come out of on the other side and we're not gonna be okay from them. And like, how can I ever get over this and this? And how can I come out on the other side? And it's hard, like I get it. Like when you're going through some really tough shit, like it's really, really hard to see on the other side, like how can this thing end up being good? So I'm gonna share some stuff with you guys and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna spill it out. I'm just gonna spill it out like I always do, you guys know that I'm all about being vulnerable and truthful and real and raw with you guys. And it's been like a while since I've come on and I thought what better day to like do this than New Year's Eve, you know? <laughs> We're about to go into a new decade and I have come through so much these past 10 years, but especially like this year. So I'm just gonna share like what I hated first so I'm gonna share what was really hard, what I hated this year, what I wasn't sure if it had, like what was gonna happen on the other end of it. I shed a lot of tears and um, like relationships were kind of like teetering. Um, like I just didn't know. There was just a lot of, I don't know what's gonna happen, God. Like I really don't know what's gonna happen, God. How? how can we recover from this? Like there was just a lot of those kinds of things this year. So first thing, okay, the first thing. So January um, of 2019, I don't remember the exact date, but I woke up in the middle of the night and I had like this intense, intense like debilitating pain underneath my left rib. So on your end, it might look like I'm pointing to my right, but it was actually underneath my left um, rib, like upper rib area. Went in the middle of the night to the emergency room. They thought it was gas, so they sent me home. Well, it didn't go away, like after a couple of days, it was like still bothering me. It wasn't as bad, like I could walk around and like do things, but um, it was still like one of those things where you're like, um, it's not getting better. I think I need to go back to the doctor. So I went back to the doctor and ended up having an ultrasound and um, a CT scan and they put like the blue liquid stuff in me and they did a CT scan from like my neck all the way down to, um, I think it was like my upper thigh. So it went past my female areas and they basically were checking like all the stomach region and like all that stuff and it was scary. Like, I don't like the doctors, okay? I don't really know, like, who enjoys it, but if I have to go, like, I normally feel panic before. It's just this fear thing. Even just talking about it right now, I'm getting, like, sweaty. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I hate it, you know? But I did it. Like, I pushed myself to do it, and I'm so glad that I did, you guys, because it wasn't, like, a death experience. Like, I thought, like, a, a couple days prior to that, before I found out, like, what was going on, I literally was having these thoughts of like, oh my God, what if, um, what if I die right now? Like, I'm just not, you know, like when you have something going on, you're like, I am just not ready to die. I don't want to leave my kids without their mom. I don't want to like, even imagine my husband having to like, like what would he do? Would he come and tell you guys uh, Heather died? Like, I don't even know what happens on Facebook. Like, I just don't even know. So I hadn't even like put myself in that thought process until like that day. And I came home and I thought, wow, like you're okay. You're still alive. 
Um, you know, you are here on this planet still. So obviously God has something that he still needs you to do, you know, and I came out on the other side being fine. It was just a, an ab strain from doing too much exercise. And my doctor, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing to say, but he's like, I think it was a combination of too much exercise and too many orgasms in a row. So, sorry to say that, but it was just one of those things where you're constantly like, you know, and having that intense like uh, stomach sit up feeling, you know? So he's like, I think a combination of that is what caused that. So for the first like two months of 2019, you guys, I was told that I could not exercise. Do you know, like, do you guys know how hard it is to tell somebody and to like follow instruction to not exercise when you are a health person and you're like helping others with their health and um, like you've lost a hundred pounds and you don't want to gain it back and like to be told you can't exercise is like the worst feeling ever. And so all I could do was sit on the couch for like the first month at least of January of 2019, I did nothing, you guys. And so what I noticed during that time was <laughs> I got depressed and I and I had thought that I had gotten beyond anxiety, depression, like, you know, you get to this place and you're like, oh, I beat that, I beat that, I never have to worry about that again, I don't have to think about it. Well, sometimes you think that you're over things and you've learned your lesson but then you see something like this come up and you're like, oh, uh, I guess I still have some growth, you know, in this area that I need to do. And that was definitely shown to me is like, okay, Heather, you're teaching people how not to eat when they're feeling emotional. And here you are feeling emotional, being told you can't work out, which is like my favorite thing ever. And all you're doing is sitting and watching TV and I started to eat. I did like January, February, I was like eating. Not only that, okay, but one of the things that I made a note on during this time when like my health thing was happening, um, I also had made the mistake and it was a naive mistake because I didn't know any better. I really, really didn't. But I was starting to, and I think it was because at first it turned from being bored to questioning, um, starting to question like my validity and like my worth and um, like Chuck was still going to work and like I didn't have anyone to talk to really here, physically here, and because the boys have moved to uh, Colorado. And so... I was getting some attention from not just males, but also females, like, you know, and I was mistaking what I thought was a friendship, which turned into not being a friendship. It actually turned into something that I'm hearing a lot more of, which is called narcissism. I didn't even know you guys what narcissism or a person that was a nar narcissist. I actually didn't even know what that was. <laughs> until I went through a couple of friendships that I thought were friendships, but they really weren't. They were just, you know, needing something themselves. And then me with my big heart and very giving and very loving of myself, you know, to these people. And um, it, it backfired, like it definitely backfired on me. And I became very, very hurt. I was so hurt that I became very guarded then after that with, friendships from the rest of the year. And so that was one of the things that I hated this year is like the health thing and then understanding that there's people out in the world that will take advantage of someone that is very loving and very trusting. And um, I had to learn that the very, very hard way. So that was the second thing that was really, really hard this year. Um, the third thing, <laughs> The third thing this year that was really, really hard was um, kind of along the same thing as what I just said, but like 
thinking that someone is your friend and then you opening up to them and being vulnerable and like sharing like struggles and like, you know, personal things with people who you think are like your friends, but then like they use that and turn it against you. And so I had to go through that too. So <laughs> this year has been tough in that way. Um, and they were very, very hurtful, you guys. Like, so hurtful. I just, I, I guess growing up, I was so guarded and protected from knowing that there was people out there like this, that when I became an adult and I started to raise my kids, I was so focused on just putting all my love and energy into them that I wasn't out in the world, like making new friendships with adult people because I was like so focused on, um, you know, my family and raising them. And then when they moved away, I, you know, I kind of been going through that empty nest thing, even though Josh is here. Um, it's just, he doesn't actually like having Josh at home almost doesn't feel like having Josh at home. Cause he's so freaking quiet and he doesn't have friends over or nothing like that. So it feels like we're alone a lot of times. Um, and so this year I decided that I was going to go out of my way and go out and, you know, join some moms groups and go out and do some more social things. And like through all these things, you know, I discovered that people, um, are not as nice as they say that they are. And so that actually, unfortunately kind of caused a little bit of jadedness, I think is the right word. And so this year has been, it's been a little more difficult for me to, um, it's been a little more difficult for me to trust people. And so that was number three. Okay, so that was number three. And, and I promise I'm gonna get to the good stuff in a second. I just wanna share with you guys that like the hard stuff, because it's been really, really difficult for me, you guys, this year. I have like I said, shed a lot of tears, a lot. I questioned who I was. I started to question what I was offering to the world, you know, and when you go through stuff like this and um, your belief gets questioned in yourself, like it's hard. It is so hard, you guys. It's really, really, really hard. And I really want you guys to understand that I understand a lot of the stuff that you guys go through too, because I'm also human, you know, and I give of myself so freely. Like God has placed inside my heart this, this very loving spirit, this very trusting spirit, this very naive little girl trusting spirit. I have that and I know that it's a gift I know it's a gift that God's given to me, but it also led to some people this year abusing that gift and me going like, whoa, I didn't even know that people were capable of doing that, you know? So it was just a little more difficult this year. I'm out of that now, but earlier this year, it was really, really hard, really hard. Um, so let me get some water because that was really, really hard <laughs> to share with you guys. Um, all right, the last thing that was really, really hard this year, <sighs> um, really hard to share this, but you know, for years, you guys, with you guys watching me on, on Facebook and Instagram, I represented other people's products, okay? And a lot of what I have done over the years is representing other people, like representing other companies and having that confidence because they've been around for a long time. And so a lot of my confidence when I was selling those products before was seeing how long they had been out, you know, how they handled themselves in, in, you know, um, the workplace and in the public's eye. And like, I put my trust in those, in those corporations. Right. And so because I had that trust, in those corporations when I was selling those products, it was pretty easy for me because, you know, I trusted them, you know, but then when I decided to pull away and start to create my own, like create my own, like take my own story and put it into, um, its own thing, its own, I don't want to necessarily call it a product, um, but its own, program, its own system. 
Uh, when I did that, when I made that decision, I knew it was coming from inside. Like I knew that God had a bigger purpose for me than to just sit behind um, a computer, behind a desk and represent someone else. I knew that, he, that God wanted me to share my own story. And so I did take that very scary step and I invested in myself and I invested, you know, in a book, you know, to write a book, to put out my story, which I did that in February. And then around my book, I got this idea in my brain, um, you know, creative juices were flowing one day and I was like, oh, what if I put together a coaching system that goes with my book? Because then people will get me and like, you know, all the stuff that I had to go through to fully get and grasp, like how hard this health journey is and all my heart, like they could get all of my hard daily shit that I had to like go through and discover about myself to then get to this other side where I had a successful, you know, weight loss journey. So I was like, oh, I should create something like that, which I did, which I did. And I went out into Facebook land and Instagram and started talking about it with my neighbors and like people at the gym and different things. And here's the, in the very beginning, you guys, the response that I got was like crickets. And I was like, what is happening? What is happening? And I didn't understand it. I, I honestly, I was like, I don't understand like how I could do so well representing someone else's product, but then pull away and decide to do something on my own that I knew, I knew I was feeling called to do from God. I knew it, but I kept getting doors like shut in my face and I kept hearing people say, no, thank you. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And here's what I noticed is that I took I took the nose to heart and I felt that instead of people saying no to my program and my system, that they were saying no to me. And now of course on the other side, I know they weren't, okay. But during, during this time of learning and going through my internal process of putting myself and my own business out into the world and getting a no, it, it, it's so different, you guys. Okay, I know a lot of my friends represent, you know, other products, um, you know, unique and all these different things. Um, and so, you know, maybe you're already going through this yourself. I don't know. You can tell me. But like, I found it way easier to sell someone else's product than to sell myself. And <laughs> so I'm going to start crying now because, oops, sorry, I was getting a call. Oh, that was my son. Um, he might call again. So what I discovered was I thought that my belief in myself was a lot higher than it was. But what I noticed was that it was my head being too big. And because I had a lot of success, you guys, I had a lot of success. And when you have a lot of success in your past, that can really get to your head. And I didn't realize that I had a big head about that. <laughs> until I broke apart from the companies that I was representing and started doing my own thing. Because when I started representing my own thing and I got the nose, like I started to take it really, really personal. And I was like, oh my God, they're saying no to me. That must mean that this is not gonna work. It must mean I'm not supposed to do this, God. What am I supposed to do now, God? And so I literally, you guys would, would sit on the couch or sit at, at my computer and I would have these days where sometimes I would just bawl. And I was like, I thought I was supposed to be doing this. What am I supposed to do? Like, what am I supposed to do? I really thought that this was something I was supposed to do, God. And I would just cry out to him. And I was like, I don't get it. I thought I was on the right path, okay? So I had months of this, months. And meanwhile, you know, Chuck is out and he's working his, you know, going to his regular job and he's bringing home, you know, the great paycheck. Um, and here I am over here struggling and he's wanting to help me and try and figure it out. And, and we couldn't figure it out. And um, finally, you guys, this is, this is what I wanted to share with you is that, okay, all of those hard things that I just talked to you guys about, here is what I discovered, okay? <sighs> 
What I discovered is that although those things were really, really hard, each of those individual things this year, and I still cry about it because I still feel the emotion is so raw, but even though those things were hard, what I appreciate are the lessons that I learned from each of those things. And what I thought that I hated about each of those things that I went through um, turned into feeling, and so the hate went from hate to then lessening and feeling hard, more like a challenge. And then the challenge went from that to going inward to myself and becoming more reflective and asking myself like, why? Why am I having the re these reactions to these things that are happening? Like, why? And so I went into that. And then I spent some time in the why and really digging into myself and figuring out myself. And like, what went from that to figuring out myself was actually turned into appreciation and now being 100% 100, 100 grateful because if I didn't go through those things that I did this year, you guys, like one, if I didn't push myself to figure out what was going on in my health, like I know I wouldn't be here right now. Like I know, I know I wouldn't be here, you know, I, because if I didn't go take care of myself and I was still pushing myself, I could have made it a lot worse on myself. And like the small ab strain and small hernia, it could have been worse. Like if I didn't go and get myself checked out and I, and I didn't listen to the doctor and pull back on my exercise and rest, like I could have made it harder on myself. So I'm very grateful that even though like, that was hard, that I listened and I took the time to rest and reflect. Like, so I'm very thankful because what, what went from that turned into, whoa, like there's probably other people out there that have hernias, that have like things that they need to um, be careful with inside their bodies. They can't go full out into exercise. So the creativity juices started to flow during the summer when all of this stuff was happening. And that turned into me creating my own fitness like workouts. And so like I actually teach people workouts now, you guys. I never did that before. I never even thought that I would want to do that before. Like I used to sell Beachbody and it was all like go work out to Beachbody, go work out. Well, all of that training from Beachbody led to now I've used what was really hard in my own life to creating these workouts that are, are conscious and, and cautious for people that need to be careful but still wanna get a workout in. And so I, now I've created this modified version of workouts and I teach them every single freaking day and it feels good, like it feels good, like I'm helping people now and I wouldn't have even gotten to this place had I not gone through that in January. So it like excites me now, like oh my God, like all that pain has led me to this place now and it's crazy awesome, you know? So that's one thing. Um, <laughs> the next thing that I learned, which I shared to you guys about like being in some relationships with some narcissistic people and like that was really hard. Um, but what that led to was realizing like who my true friends are and focusing all of my energy. So the love that God has given to me inside my heart and like the love and the trust that I have that just comes so naturally for me. I'm now taking that energy and instead of putting it into people that are gonna like wanna take advantage of that side of me, I'm now putting it into the relationships that matter, like my husband and my sons, right? And my mom and dad and like my stepmom and like my stepsister and brother and like people that actually matter and actually care about me. Like they literally care. They're not trying to take advantage of me they love me for me, right? So instead of me like worrying about other people um, that are wanting to <laughs> screw me over or you know do those kind of things and throw me under the bus, like who cares about those people, right? Like I wanted to care about them, but they they showed me that they didn't care about me by very easily 
doing mean things, mean spirited things. So why, why as people should we care and run after people and try and fix those relationships and they don't even care. Like they don't even care. It's not even worth the energy, you know? So that is a very hard lesson that I had to learn this year is, you know, really truly put the energy and the love and the, the, the high spirit that God has given to us into the relationships that actually matter, that actually matter that are going, those relationships of, the, of people that care about us so deeply and want to help us to get to that next level. Like those are the people that we should be spending time with and loving on. So that is a huge lesson that I learned this year. And I had to go through all the, the, shitty, the shitty relationships to get to this place though. So like when you're looking back on your guys' year, like there's going to be tough things that you're going to be like, oh, that was sucked. I hated going through that. But you need to remember that we have to go through the hard in order for a lesson to be learned so that we can get to the other side and be free and hopefully like learn something and then maybe teach it, you know, to somebody else. Like that's, that's the whole like human life purpose, you know, is like hard, learn the lesson from the hard and then turn around and teach it. Like that's, that's really what God wants us to do. So Anyway, so that was like a good thing that I learned from going through the hard relationships. Um, as far as like the trust, like my trust level in people, like that did change this year. Um, like unfortunately, I don't trust as easily, which, you know, if you guys have ever gone through a relationship, you probably have, you know, struggles with this too. So I'm like... I was like 90% jaded like earlier this year, but, but now like that 90% is probably like one or like maybe one to 5%. So like I'm still giving of myself. I still love on people, but as soon as I pick up on, on something that is just a flag and it's just like, I, I feel now, I feel now that God is using that little flag as like a gift to me. And as soon as I feel or see the flag, I'm like gone. Like I don't even like waste time anymore. Like I used to run after people, try and fix things. Like mm, I don't even do that anymore. I'm like, you know what? If they don't want to be my friend, I don't have to waste time. I'm just going to go and, and be friends with someone that wants to be my friend, you know? And, and if I don't have any friends, like you guys, it's not even freaking worth it. Like I know as a woman, it's important to be, to feel like you're a part of a community, but like, I feel like it's not even worth the energy to run after a group of people or like even one or two people if they're really truly not going to be on your side and like support and uplift you. I think it's important that you, if you're only f running into people that are not for you, it's probably a sign that you should maybe take a step back and, you know, spend some alone time and really figure out who you are as a person and, you know, find the people that actually love you <laughs> for you. Thankfully, I have people in my life that, that do love me for me, like my family. So there was a period of time this year where I just got by myself and with them and, you know, developed and nurtured and like helped held them up, cared about them, you know, and, and it was the best thing that I could have done because then I remembered who I was inside and, you know, and got real and raw with that again and started putting that out into the universe again. And I wasn't like being somebody else, you know, I was being myself. And now like I'm seeing that, that more and more people are sensing my realness again and it's like attracting the right people. So that's a very, very hard lesson, but it's something that I'm very, very glad that I went through. Um, the other thing, the last thing that I was talking to you guys about my business. Okay, so this has been very, very interesting year. Um, let me take some water, hold on. <laughs> One second. So, you know, I shared with you guys that, <clears throat> that I thought my belief was higher, but then when I started to do my own like business and I was told no, that I was really taking it personal. Okay, here's, here's what I learned from that. Um, what I learned from that is, and a lot of this comes from Joel Osteen. I have his book now, The Power of Favor. Um, 
it's like too far away for me to grab. But if you haven't gotten it yet, it's really good. And I was listening to a lot of his like little talks on Facebook Live and Lakewood Church and like um, YouTube. And I was like really doing a lot of inspirational stuff this year and, and really just getting back to my core center, who I am. Um, but what I noticed was as soon as I stepped in, so I went from being like, oh no, you know, feeling to stepping in and realizing, okay, God, I know for a fact that you have given me this vision to put out into the universe, my damn you weight loss system. Like I know for a fact that it was God that like created the vision. So I woke up, I was like, ding, and I was buzzing with excitement and I, I just knew it. Okay, so what I realized this year was the people that I'm supposed to work with are going to come into my path, whether it's me reaching out to them or they're finding me somehow. Maybe their friend told me them about me, maybe, I don't know, through the gym, something. So what I started to do, and this is only like September, October, so this is pretty fresh, this whole, this whole realization. What I started to do, you guys, is I started to wake up every single day and I told myself, okay, Lord, like I told God and myself, the people that, that, are, that I'm supposed to work with today are going, are going to say yes. The people that are not meant for my program, that are meant for something else, they're gonna say no. And if they say no, I'm gonna let it go and say good luck, thank you, and move on to the next person. And as soon as I started doing that and releasing the emotions behind the no, Oh my God, my business has exploded. Like I'm not even, I'm not even joking with you guys. Like as soon as I, you know, released that feeling of being desperate for business because I needed to make, you know, income, which we did obviously. But as soon as I let that go, like the emotion of that go, what happened was I was being more grateful for the, like during the day, I was like, I know God, you're gonna bring the people that I'm supposed to you know, work with, they're gonna come. I'm thankful for them already. I know, I know they're gonna like, it's gonna, this, this system's gonna make a big difference to them. Like I know that those are the ones that I'm supposed to work with. And as soon as I like let that go and just thank God ahead of time, God, I'm, I can't wait. I can't wait to work with that person. I know that this is going to be the very thing that sets them free and it's going to be amazing and it's going to make a huge impact on their life. And like I was really, I started getting excited for like these future people. And what happened was it was just like this fruit just fell, 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 fell. And now the last several months, the people that I've actually been working with are exactly those people that I trusted and I prayed for, and I knew that God was gonna like bestow favor on me with them, and I just trusted it, and it's made a huge impact. And what has happened during this process is that my, instead of being like stressed out, like my creative juices have been just flowing and flowing and flowing, and like God is giving me more ideas, you know, on how to um, to reach more people and like. Um, how to make more of an impact in people's lives and like what to actually talk about and what to share on here. Like he's been giving me so many ideas and even just this, like you guys, I was, I was in prayer and I was reading and I was like, you know what? I, I feel like I need to do something today because it's the end of 2019. I don't know what to talk about. Oh, maybe I should talk about the shit that I hated this year and like talk about how I overcame it. Um, and the first thing that came into my brain as soon as I thought about let's be real and raw with like the stuff that was really hard this year, I was like, ooh, God, if I share that, they're really gonna know. Like they're really gonna know. And, and then like right after that, I was like, should I share that? And I'm like, you know what, Heather, you have come way too far. You've grown up way too much this year to hold back now. Like you just need to do it. And so here I am. Here I am sharing, you know, the real and raw and, and all the stuff in between. So I hope that this is like really, really helping you guys. Um, I think the only thing that, that I wrote down that I, as like a thought is um, 
the, the main thing that I really felt that I wanted to share, like just a, a real thought, I hope you guys can really take this and apply it to your life, is as soon as you focus on you and what you're really, really gifted at, what really makes you feel like you inside, like what makes you feel like you're happiest, and like you're really living and you're um, thriving, like what makes you feel like that, the gifts that God has given to you personally, no one else is gonna understand those things, you guys, and you shouldn't expect them to. I shouldn't expect anybody to understand or feel the same kind of passion over you know, what I am led to do. So what you're led to do, like we're each gonna have this separate passion for what we're supposed to do, what we're meant to do, how we're meant to impact the world. And it be, just because we feel it doesn't mean that others around us are gonna feel that. And so understand that as you go into 2020 and you're walking in your gift zone, that not the people that are the closest to you are probably gonna be the ones that are not gonna understand the most because they see you every day, you know? And so like they see that you're going after something, but they don't get it. And you're gonna have to get to this place of being okay with that. Like I had to get to that place of being okay and just continuing to push through that, move through it, move forward towards your vision, move forward towards your goal, move forward to what feels right to you. And I swear you guys, like you are gonna be blessed so much more than you even understand right now. Like, you're probably like, oh my God, Heather, how? Okay, I didn't know the how for myself. All I knew was what I was being called to do. And even though it was scary and uncomfortable, I did it anyways. And I didn't see like the fruit right away, but I knew the fruit was coming. I just knew it. And if I kept plugging away, and if you keep plugging away and keep doing what you're called to do, like it's gonna rain blessings, 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 blessings. God's favor is gonna shine on you. Like you don't even know what's gonna happen in 2020. As you guys stay true to your passion and stay true to who you know that you are inside. So keep staying true to yourself Keep doing what you know that you're supposed to do every single day. Take those daily steps towards the person that you know and feel inside that you're meant to be, and you are going to be unfreaking stoppable. And you're going to be leading a very empowered, powerful life that is going to make a huge impact on the world. I'm seeing it in myself, and I know that you guys will see it too. So I love you so much you guys i love you so much thank you so much for being here being with me this whole year you know my clients if you guys are watching i just want to say hold on thank you for trusting me you guys thank you so much for being here for trusting the process that I'm taking you through. I know that you guys are seeing results and you're feeling you know, that excitement and difference in you already just even a couple months in. It's making me so happy and I know that whoever decides to join me um, today, which by the way, um, I turned off comments because I knew that, that, that me talking about this stuff was gonna be really hard, but I do wanna say that if you guys are wanting weight loss and not just using a product, but you want to lose weight in such a way that feels free, that doesn't feel restricted, that you're allowed to eat the foods that you love around you know, when you're actually hungry and learning how to not overeat, learning how to not be emotional around your food and just eating for fuel when you're hungry, if that is something that you like, feel like you struggle with and you want to be set free from that once and for all and you literally want to lose weight, keep it off, but enjoy your life still, like live, have joy, do the things that you love, don't be you know, confined to a meal plan and counting calories and all that stuff. Like if you don't wanna live like inside a diet like your entire life where you feel deprived all the time, like this is the program for you, okay? Um, I'm coming up on my 10 year anniversary of keeping 
106 pounds off. Like who freaking does that? I don't know of anybody that has kept their weight off that long. All right, that's doing, that's used the same process, okay, like I have. And so I know that this works. I'm seeing it in other people and I would love to help you guys out. My, my program is on sale today through midnight California time. So if I've already talked to you, reach out to me. If I haven't talked to you yet, reach out and I'll actually uh, go through a series of questions to make sure that you'll benefit from what I teach because it's a very specific process. Not everyone benefits. Um, but if you'd like to have that conversation, please reach out to me or comment below and I would love to help you guys out. All right. So happy new year. Let's ring in 2020 together. Great things are coming. You guys, I'm so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> you guys, I love you. Bye.